Well, and she moved to Is Houston or, or Chicago or someplace. Speed. All right, Jimmy, go okay. ahead, please. Well, you're back doing stuff that I like. I loved Cliffhanger. How, what was your final vote on that? It did pretty good. Oh, no, I'm very, very happy. We did about 85 domestic, and we're doing well, well, far. And so uh, it did, it, 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 it achieved its purpose. It was entertaining, and it got me back to where I should be, maybe. And you were doing this while the publicity was going on for Cliffhanger, so uh, you were probably pretty pretty pooped out during the earlier part of this year. Yeah, pretty much so, pretty much so. But I tell you, the, the mere fact that I Cliffhanger was so important to me that there's a lot of residual energy, if you know what I mean, you just pull it up, because I, I felt that the film was solid, and I feel the same way about this one, so it's easy to talk about it. If you've got something like Rhinestone or whatever, you go, it's tough to think of words going, Duh. I don't know what, what could I was with Dolly say? this week and she didn't mention it. Anyway. No, everyone seems to forget it. Never happened. It never happened. I was there. I know it happened. But it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, this movie is a lot of fun. In fact, it's un frighteningly believable. I don't want to think that it could be possible, but it's one of those future stories that I say, I, I bought this. I bought the characters. And sometimes science fiction you don't buy. No, uh, but they, they were very, very uh, cunning in the way they constructed the script that they walked that line to provide entertainment, but also there's a little bit of insight where you, technology can catch up the way it's progressing, like with the Verisex helmet and the mm -hmm. sex scenes and things like that. Yes, it's very possible. I'm glad they don't have that machine for bad words yet. That, <laughs> can would, be, you that would be a very, very expensive one. <laughs> what do you do for fun? I mean, I know you play polo, I think, but I mean, what do you do on your day off? I become a golfing fanatic, and that's really it. I, uh, either I'll paint uh, golf, and that, that takes up hours, as you know. And But golfing has really come to the forefront. I'm fanatical about it. Matter of fact, I was just down in Orlando taking lessons with a man named David Ledbetter, who is probably the best instructor in the world. He teaches all the pros. I don't know what he's doing with me, but I thought some of it might just happen to rub off. Are you any good? I'm not bad. I mean, it's, it's not a total embarrassment. You're not yelling for and whacking people with no, your great no, no, no. strength we, or something? We, we, we worked through that already. I, I had about six months of that where literally uh, you knew I was playing because everyone was wearing an army helmet. So that's gone by now. Yeah, I think I would, if I saw Rambo on the golf course, I don't know what I'd think about that if I was coming at you the other way. You know what the big problem is? They I think thought Gerald that, Ford was the problem. You know? <laughs> no, being Rambo, Rocky, whatever, they expect every shot to go 700 yards and the ball to explode in midair. I mean, they're expecting superhuman feet, so that's the problem. That's funny. What are your musical tastes? I don't think I've ever talked to you about that. I, I, I don't even have, I don't, couldn't even guess. I guess you might say that I'm kind of stuck in the 70s in a sense. I, I like that music very much, the Buffalo Springfield and, and of contemporary music. I just tend to like soulful, like Michael McDonald grooves. Uh, I mean, some of the heavy metal, like Stone Temple Pilots, I mean, they're very inventive. But I tend to go for things a little bit more uh, diversified and story eyes. The, the, this, the songs have a little bit of a message in there somewhere. Are you a lot of fun to be with when you're making something like Demolition Man? Yeah. I am. I'm you still try to keep. Oh your, yeah. Because you're fun. I, I mean, you're a fun guy. And I didn't know if when you get in these things and you're getting beat up and you're really having to pump up and uh, and really get into this, if you were a lot of fun to be around. Yes, uh, I think so because I, I wasn't always during Rambo. I would I would go into some very black moods. I don't know if the character permeated my normal sense of humor, or whatever. But in Demolition Man, I'm just feeling good. And after Cliffhanger, I try to keep it light and lively and uh, keep the crew just not thinking about the terrible hours they have to work. So I, I would say I try to keep it going. Yeah, these shoots are not easy, are they? Oh, no, no, no. They're getting tougher and tougher and tougher because the audience demands, I think, more of a certain kind of uh, action film. And to keep topping yourself is no mean feat, really. Yeah, and, and not that you're an old guy, but, I mean, does your, does your body feel any different than it did when you were 25? I have a Tylenol body, man. It's just, uh, <laughs> buffering Tylenol. I mean, I still can't get over you hanging on Cliffhanger. That oh. was still spectacular. Thank you. So, obviously, you're still in great shape. But I was just wondering if you ever woke up with any aches and pains. Oh, I crawl to work. Sometimes, I swear to you, I cannot get out of bed. It's, a, it's like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. No, it's, it's not a pretty sight sometimes. Were you that way in Rocky, though, taking the hits and doing some of that? No, not as much. For some reason, because of the training in Rocky, it was always so fluid, constantly yeah. moving around, that it took a lot. I mean, there'd be some terrible bruises, ribs, whatever, but actual just muscle fatigue. I mean, now the knees start to go, the elbows. It's, it's get, catching up to me soon. Wesley told me that he just didn't, he couldn't do the weights and that kind of stuff. He wants to do his thing and go. He said, you have to really like it to pump up like you and Arnold and uh, others have done. You must really like doing that. It is. 
I, I find the gym to be more than what it appears to be on the outside. People look at it as a torture chamber, and I suppose in a sense it is. But I look at it as a kind of like institute of discipline. Because, like, for example, we're up there at 6.30 this morning. I don't want to do it, I, but it just keeps me focused a little bit. And then when I do it during a film, uh, it, again, it just reaffirms that, yes, you must be committed, you must do it, and, and it kind of uh, bleeds over into my work. And what about you? What about Sylvester Stallone would you change if, if you could wipe this uh, what, what about you? What habit drives people crazy? Drives the women in your life crazy? Drives you crazy? Uh, I would have to say... Um, I get manic. I, I have a lot of energy at times, and I tend to be a constant nuisance, if you know what I mean. Always joking around, always like prodding, goading the people like crack, especially on the golf course. I mean, I have, it's very lonely. No one wants to play with me anymore. I mean, I play out there, the crickets leave. It's like, I, hey, you know, you're pretty ugly for a cricket. You know, <laughs> just constantly staying on people. And I, and I like to be teased back. It's just one ups me ship. But I guess it gets on people's nerves after a while. Yeah. You're a lot of fun. I love this movie. Thank I think you. it's great. Nice Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, I will give that to Paul.